Dr. Sammy here, your friendly neighborhood entomologist. We are here in Belton, Texas to film the great solar eclipse of 2024. But we're not just here for the solar eclipse. We're also here to see what happens to the bees when the lights go out. We're really going to get the opportunity to document really interesting behaviors and some of which have never actually been recorded. As a bee researcher, I'm very interested in what happens with honeybees. They navigate based on the angle of the sun and without the sun, what happens to them? I have never had the opportunity to see an actual solar eclipse, to see the bees at the same time. This is just perfect for me as an entomologist and... Er Erica? Dr. Sammy! Texas Bee Works, what are you doing here? I'm here to see you! What? When I heard that the coolest entomologist in the world was gonna be in <laughs> Texas for the coolest celestial event of our lifetime to study bees, I wanted to stop by and see if you needed any help. No way! Yeah. I love seeing your videos and I don't know if anyone's told you, you have a really soothing voice. <laughs> Like you could do audible. I think I'm gonna stick to bees, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. This is great. I mean, now that you're here, would you wanna like maybe do a video together? Yes, let's do it. So with solar eclipses, I've always been so excited about everything that I've read about the behavior of organisms during eclipses. But with bees, they say because the bees navigate with the angle of the sun and it's so important for flight, they'll just descend. Do you think that will actually happen? I think what we're gonna see is we've got the bees in the hive and we've got bees out of the hive. The bees in the hive are are gonna naturally kind of start to relax and mm -hmm. maybe think that it's nighttime and mm -hmm. go into their rest period. The bees outside, of course, I think are gonna stop whatever work they're doing. Mm -hmm. If they're flying, if they're foraging, they're gonna stop because yeah. they don't have the sun, of course. Yeah. But I'm not sure if until we hit totality, if we're really gonna see a dramatic change in bee behavior, I think the what same. do you think? As long as there's still a sliver of sun left, I think they'll still get the impression that it's daytime. There's normally a gradient over time of the sun going under the horizon and disappearing, and that leaves them with the impression that they still got a little bit of time based on how much sunlight there is left. But this will be a much faster version of that. I don't think they'll know what to do with it. It'll be interesting. It'll be for amazing. Sure. <laughs> with all of that said, do you have any questions for me? I was wondering, Dr. Sammy, I see this big box here. Yeah. What is this for? And then also, what is this guy and what's he for? We were just strolling along looking at all the insects and tripped over an actual fossil here. No. Yeah, a literal that fossil. That is just, so cool. It's, it's awesome. Can I touch it's it? It's awesome. You, yeah. you have to. Wow. What a find. Yeah. But this is actually supposed to be the thing that captures your attention on this table. This terrarium, I think, is going to be perfect for what we're doing because the bees are pretty dispersed in the environment right now. It can be hard to see exactly what they're doing. If we can watch the bees in here, then we have the opportunity to see exactly what they're doing really close up. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> yeah, let's get some bees in there. Let's do this thing. So phase one of the eclipse just started and we could not be more excited. So we're just going to pop our eclipse glasses on, take a look, but then soon after that, we've got to go to one of the colonies, get a bunch of bees that we can dump into our observation tank because we want to actually observe them close up as well. You ready? Yes, let's do it. Check her out. Ah! Wow. So it kind of looks like a Ritz cracker that somebody's taking a bite out of at the moment. Or like a fat Pac-Man. Oh yes, definitely a fat Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's phase one. And the cloud cover is actually sort of beautiful to see them cross over the sun. The wisps going by, yes. like it just adds a little bit of depth to the experience. The great thing about it is that the thunderstorms have been pushed back in the forecast. So we just get this. And I tell you what, every time she pops out, it makes me even more thankful to not have cloud cover. And then when she goes away like that, <laughs> it makes you more grateful. So now that we can't see her, should we do bees? Let's do the bees. Okay. So that was successful after our second time around. That first colony didn't 
quite have enough brood. We didn't want to take a bunch of their workforce away, but the next colony that we went to, plenty of bees. They're all kind of festooning and doing their thing. We're going to see how these behaviors change when we reach totality. I think you said a second ago the moon looked like Pac-Man. Yeah. And now it's Pac-Man mouth full yes. <laughs> We have microphones, we have cameras set up in every direction, one that's trained on our observation tank. I cannot wait to see what happens. There is this sliver of sun left. The most amazing things I've ever seen. So beautiful. Is this your first eclipse ever? This is my first total. Same. Oh, I'm gonna freak out. I mean, there's no way not to freak out. Oh, y'all, it's happening. <laughs> the bees, they are on their way home. Oh my God. This is so awesome. It's so dark. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, all right, all right, we have to look, we have to look. Oh, too much cloud. Oh, there it goes. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. There's the corona. Oh, it's so what? beautiful. That is the most gorgeous thing. Look at the corona. How extraordinary. I've never seen anything like that. Around the horizon, it even looks like sunset. Oh my gosh, it's like a 360 sunset. Let's see what the bees are doing. There is a dramatic shift here. Notice the bees are no longer flying. That is amazing. Look at the way that they're circling at the bottom. What? 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 The bees are just going around in circles in seemingly this confused manner. Erica, is this not the coolest thing ever? This is the coolest <laughs> thing. I think we're in full totality. Yeah, we're in full totality we're and total cloud. <laughs> With the bees! Bees, you're in totality. What do you think of totality, bees? <laughs> Don't worry, you're gonna be okay. They're so quiet oh, now. They are, it's like they're whispering their buzz right now. Erica, I'm sure you've noticed the temperatures dropped a lot. Yes. I was hot before in these sleeves. It's pretty cool out and I love the breeze, but much of the breeze has stopped. Oh, can you see it? Oh my gosh. Oh my, there's a diamond ring right there, right on the side. You can even see some of the atmosphere kind of billowing out. That's potentially a massive plasma rocketing out of the side of the sun where it'll be pulled back in to another part of the sun, but it's, these, these mass ejections are something serious, and the fact that you can even see them right now is because of the way that the moon is blocking a lot of the light that would normally obstruct that view. Wow, it's getting lighter so quickly. Oh, okay, I might have to put my glasses back on. So totality has just ended, and the bees have started flying again. That is wild! Like immediately, like the second that totality began to abate, they just went right back to normal. I cannot wait to see what that camera has captured of all of this. They're starting to fly out of the entrances too. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, they were just a little confused, and now I think they feel like, oh, okay, I got it. Do you think the bees would be laughing at us, making such a big deal out of this, stopping so. our whole day to observe this? <laughs> it's like, they don't have that luxury, you know? That's a good point, they've got they so much work to they do. They do. They can't just stop their lives and take a whole day off to watch a celestial event. It makes no difference to them almost. Okay, now I feel silly. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> I cannot believe what we just saw. The way that they started just running around in a circle and fully abandoned their capacity to fly without exception. There was not a single one flying in yeah. there. I can't wait to see what happens when we open it. Oh. And if they go right back to their hive or if they're a little bit confused, do they want to fly right away? Don't try this at home, all right? Check it out. So notice the way that they're spiraling around. This is something that bees do to orient themselves. I think they're still pretty confused by the fact that the sun is not doing what the sun is supposed to be doing. They're just figuring things out. Now notice, most of them have eventually found their way. These are probably the nurse bees down here and some of the newly emerged bees that can't actually do much flying. So we'll actually take this and dump it in front of the colony so that they can just walk back in. The whole box smells like a <laughs> beehive now. Ooh, wow, they have really left their scent in this box. I think if you left it out with the lid off, you'd catch a swarm in You probably here. would. This is very strange. Erica, come look at this. So there's a bee rubbing its tongue around in circles, <gasps> and you can see a spiral, circles. like Dr. this squiggly pattern. Sammy, it's uh, almost 
Can we, can you, I, I don't know if this is related to the eclipse, but I've never in my life seen this behavior. You can see it dragging its tongue against the glass. And if you look closely, I'm not sure how well you can focus. You can see it started here and then it looped here and then it looped here and then it looped again. And now it's going around in tight little circles. What? Did the eclipse confuse it? Maybe it was more than an inconvenience for this particular bee. Do you think she's making what she thinks are cave drawings to let other bees know <laughs> that what's happening? These are just a bunch of... Oh my gosh! Is, maybe she's drawing the eclipse which she just saw. Maybe she's the record-keeping bee. You just <laughs> Jane goodall this bee. I think that's exactly what you just did. But look, Dr. Sammy, I don't see any other bees doing what that's she true. is doing. Is that also, a different bee? Oh, it's also, doing it too! Yep, with her proboscis as well. She's following her path what? perfectly. What is happening? I need to... I, we got to send this video to some other bee researchers because I don't seem to know enough about bee behavior to actually know why it would do this. And it doesn't feel like it's a waggle dance type behavior no, at, at all. all. Which is the all. first thing as bee observers and beekeepers we would expect to exactly. see like, oh, she's trying to communicate something by this path. And the fact that another bee landed and started following that same path actually does support your theory that there is some sort of chemical trail that's been left behind, even if it's just saliva. Okay, so that was the coolest thing ever, right? It was. Like scale of one to 10, oh nine God. million. Amazing, I'll never ah, forget it. My mind is blown. I wasn't sure whether it was actually going to happen or whether it would be dramatic enough for us to really capture. But the bees were in this box flying around seconds before totality. And when totality hit, there is not a single flying bee in this container. And they're all running around in a circle, almost like a death spiral that you see sometimes with ants, where ants will follow other ants. And if they accidentally walk in a circle, the trail gets stronger and stronger until they eventually burn themselves out. But as soon as totality ended, they went back to their normal behavior. And you didn't even have to have all of the sun out, just a little sliver. And they were able to navigate again and they started flying. Then we opened this up and they just orient out and go on about their business. And I cannot tell you how exciting that was to see. For us, it was amazing, exceptional. For them, it really just feels like it was an inconvenience, mm -hmm. you know? A minor inconvenience. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys had the opportunity to join us for an experience like this, where we are literally seeing things for the very first time, bee behaviors that we've never seen before. And we're not newbies. We've been hanging out with bees for quite a while. To see things like this is an incredible experience. But to also see a celestial event like what we just saw, I mean, coronal mass ejections, the actual alignment, the literal syzygy of the sun, earth, and moon all in the same plane. Ugh, I just can't. Thank you so much for joining me for this. Thank you, Dr. Sammy. I'm so grateful for this time with you and for the time with the bees <laughs> and to be here at this beautiful apiary in Belton, Texas. Yes. It just couldn't have been a better day and the sun peaked out and we got the full eclipse experience. Yes. It's a day I'll never forget. So thank you so much for including me. And we also have to thank Susan and Louis for actually letting us be here for this experience. Thank you. This is the most gorgeous place where we could have done something like this. And I hope you're very proud of what you have here. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Dr. Sammy Ramsey and Texas Bee Works. Woo! Yeah, well. It's, is that the YouTube handle? Yes, I think so. There we go. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> it was another great day of studying and saving the bees. Hey! <laughs> another great day of studying and saving the bees. <laughs>